Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseech in him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who may have an earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. <laughs> Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We rise to join together in the scene of our intro that's printed in your worship folder. <laughs>
Let us pray. O Lord, almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may live and abide forever in your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is from the prophet Malachi, the fourth chapter. Malachi writes, For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children, and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer and its meaning. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. What does this mean? This means that I should be certain that these petitions are pleasing to our Father in heaven, and are heard by him. For he himself has commanded us to pray in this way, and has promised to hear us. Amen, amen means yes, yes. It shall be so. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's second letter to the church at Thessalonica, the third chapter. St. Paul writes, Finally, brothers, pray for us, that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you, and that what we, what we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. For not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness not in accord with the tradition that you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with toil and labor we worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate, for even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise to the Holy Gospel.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory be to thee, o Lord. While some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified. For these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it therefore in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for your for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are days of vengeance, to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant, and for those who are nursing infants in those days. For there will be a great distress upon the earth, and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth the stress of nations and perplexity, because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out and leaf, you see for yourselves, and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of 
light, very God and very God, be not not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn of the day. are still constant threats. 
the antibiotics that we all so regularly depend upon to take care of our sicknesses might someday just stop working. Will the domestic oil reserves run out? And then we end up with long lines at the gas station? Confessing and living as a Christian openly in this world seems to be getting more and more difficult by the day. And the sins that we have committed and the sins of others continue to pollute this world. Violence keeps rising in places. Deaths from fentanyl poisoning and from suicide continue to skyrocket, especially among teens and young adults. And this past week, a man won a Miss USA state level pageant the other day, and not a single person batted an eye. Least of all the girls that lost to him. Jesus foretold of all of this and said that we need to take notes. But did you notice what he didn't say in our gospel reading for today? And that's just as important. Jesus doesn't tell us to start sitting around or gathering together in groups and wringing our hands and complaining about how bad everything is getting and how life was so much better 20, 30, 50 years ago and I wish we could go back to the old days. He also doesn't say, go down into your basement, lock the door. Start eating the reserves that you have hidden downstairs in the basement for the day that there might be a major storm or something else that takes place. It says this, the time is short. Pray. And while you pray, work. Or as St. Paul writes to a people in our reading for today from 2 Thessalonians, a people who are waiting for the ends of the world, he says this, do your work quietly and earn your living. St. Paul doesn't even tell the people of the church in Thessalonica, okay guys, the end of the world is almost here. It's time for you to quit your jobs and go off by yourselves and be prepared. He says, pray. Do your work quietly. And earn your living. Now, none of us like to be tested. But at times, God does test us. Like when Jesus asked Philip where he was going to buy enough bread to feed the crowd of 5,000, along with all of the women and children that were there, too. Jesus didn't say those words to Philip to make him look like a fool. Like, really, Jesus, where do you expect us to come up with the money to buy enough bread for each of these people just to have one little bite? No, Jesus asked Philip this question for Philip's own good. Now, of course, the thing that we always struggle with as Christians is trying to figure out what the difference is between being tested by God or receiving some temptation from the devil. But again, instead of spending all of our time sitting around trying to figure out whether it's one thing or another, maybe we should just live our lives as this is something that God has allowed to happen. Let us pray and work. And see where it goes. 
God tests us. And it is a good thing. But then why should we pray to be spared from it? The answer is really easy. Because it hurts. It stinks. None of us want to be tested by God. Remember what Jesus says in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night that he was to be betrayed? He prays to his Father to take the cup from him that he would not have to drink it. Now talk about a prayer that wasn't going to be answered the way that Jesus sincerely prayed for it. There's no way that the Father was going to take the cup away from his Son. There is no way that the Father was going to allow his Son not to go to the cross that next day. Jesus knew it. And he still drank the cup. Jesus told the disciples again and again and again that he had to suffer and die. But he still prayed to be spared. So what does Jesus teach us then this morning? I think he teaches us to pray for the impossible. Now, I don't mean that we should pray against the will of God that is revealed to us in the Bible. So if you're having an affair, you shouldn't pray that God would cover it up so that your husband or wife would never find out about it. Or that if you murdered somebody and buried their body in the backyard, you pray that, dear Lord, may the dog never dig up the bones. Yeah, we have that problem with Pearl. But we should be able to be honest with God. If there's somebody to be honest with, who better than it to be our Lord? To lay bare our hearts and our minds, and everything that's there. To pray boldly that our best friend's stage four cancer will be healed and gone by the next morning. That we could petition God that every child here in Michigan who has ever conceived would be able to see the light of day and live a full life. To beg the Lord that your unbelieving husband who is so against the church would next Sunday wake up with you and say, hey, I'm coming to church with you next week. Don't be ashamed of your prayers. Trust that God's not going to be disgusted with you when you ask him next Sunday that your Thanksgiving meal with your family is not going to end up in some kind of fight. God wants us to cry out to him at all times. He wants us to be bold, persistent. Know that he hears you. We don't pray to God to twist him around and get him to do things. You don't have to trick God like you trick your parents into doing the things that you want them to do. Yes, I'm looking at the four of you over there. Because we've all been teenagers before. We pray because God wants us to. We pray and we work. And then you pray some more. Your prayer hasn't been answered? Keep praying. The world keeps getting worse. Be even more persistent in your prayers and show your neighbors Christ's love. 
granddaughters find out that they have to share a locker room with a boy, will pray for them and then go to the school board meeting. Refuse to believe that God is ignoring you or wanting you to pray to him at just the right way, at just the right time. Pray in the name of Jesus against all hope. Be it rational or irrational. Knowing that in some way God is going to answer. You see, this is Job raising his fist against God. But guess what? There's one thing that Job kept doing. <laughs> he kept praying. That's Paul sitting there in that prison when he writes to the Philippians. And yeah, what does Paul keep doing? He rejoices and he prays. We pray because we realize that we're weak and we're willing to admit it. We pray because we know we need help from someone else. We pray because we know that we don't have all the answers. Jesus commands us to pray that we would escape the tribulations that are to come. We've seen the signs. None of us want to be tortured. None of us want to see our godchildren or our grandchildren imprisoned or fined for refusing to use their gifts and their skills for things that they believe are sinful. We want to be with Jesus. No president, no organizations, nor any kind of power in this world can save us from the sin that is in this world except for the one who gave his life on the cross for you. So we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come and hear our prayers and save us from this fallen world. And not just come, Lord Jesus, be our guest at dinner today. And while you pray, don't grow weary. Do good. Your redemption draws near, but it's not here quite yet. Your husband wants you to go bowling with him tomorrow. Are we still planning to go? Okay. Your grandkids need you to give them a call this afternoon and ask them how school is going. And that you look forward to seeing them at Thanksgiving next week. Your nieces and goddaughters and your daughters and sisters need you to remind them that it's awesome to be a woman. And your sons and your godsons and your nephews and grandsons need you to teach them how to be strong men. Don't forget, your church needs you too. Jesus is nearer now than when this sermon began just a few minutes ago. We will stand before his throne without guilt because you've been washed in the waters of baptism. Your guilt is gone, for in Jesus you have been made righteous. No tears will stain your cheeks, for Jesus who died for you, purchased and won you with his own blood, is coming back. So lift up your drooping heads. Jesus draws near. Pray to him. And do your work. Believe it. For Jesus' sake. 
Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and protect your heart and mind in true faith, for life everlasting. Amen. And now I invite you to rise and please join with me as we continue our service with the singing of the opera.
blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Depart now in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
Let's rise for the next two minutes.
you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Last week, O Lord, and thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 We join in our closing. church year to all of you. We have one more Sunday in this church year to be finished next week. And then, of course, we'll have our um, Thanksgiving Eve service here at church. 
on seven o'clock on the day before Thanksgiving. And then, of course, the last Sunday in November this year will actually be the, the first Sunday of a new church year. So we'll begin the season of Advent in preparation to celebrate our Lord's first coming as a child um, on that last Sunday in November. So hopefully we'll see you over the next couple of weeks. Just a reminder, Luther Fest is coming up here soon, and there is still handouts available back in the narthex if you would like to find out more information about that. Um, also, we have our giving tree that's set up to buy things for the Compassion Pregnancy Center over in Clinton Township. So if you're all moved to take several of those ornaments, I think some new ones got put on this past week. Um, so if you would like to take a few more home, please feel free. Um, you don't have to wrap anything. It can all come to church here unwrapped. And then after it's all over with, we will make sure that everything gets over there to the Compassion Pregnancy Center. Um, also a reminder, we've got our congregational meeting to set the upcoming year's budget or work plan. So please remember to keep track of that as well. I believe there's some information about that maybe in your box already, or at least there were some numbers in there um, this weekend, so make sure that you check your box and all of that information as well, and make sure that you're here for that meeting so that we have enough people so we can approve the work plan for next year as well. Anything else? Am I forgetting anything, sweetheart? Oh, that's right. Also, point seven order. Um, you can find it on the back of your bulletin, which makes it really easy. So you can rip that last page of your bulletin out um, and fill it out and leave it for Sarah. Um, you will want to make note, though, of the date when we have to have those orders turned in. Um, so definitely the sooner the better if you would like to order point settings for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And, potentially the Sunday after. Actually, I think Christmas Day is on a Sunday this year, if I remember right. So hey, that works out well for your pastor. That's one last sermon that I have to write this year. <laughs> <laughs> See, we pastors think twice about those things, huh? Twice as long? Uh, maybe twice as long, we'll see. <laughs> what? <laughs> And, and Diane can play twice as much music as she wants to on that Sunday, too. So we'll, we'll have to see how that all plays out. Um, so just remember, point set of orders. Um, if you want to get those in, it's better to do it sooner rather than later. Okay? I think that's about it. Have a blessed week. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.